print email Facebook Twitter more opinion digital clocks spell the death of analog, but does it alter our perception of time? Alarm bells rang following reports from the UK that digital clocks are replacing their analog counterparts in high school exam rooms. Is it true that children are increasingly incapable of reading analog clocks and, more importantly, does it matter? There is anecdotal evidence that analog clocks are increasingly met with blank faces, with teachers chiming into the debate and talk show host Jimmy Kimmel conducting Vox Pop research, finding strong evidence is harder. Analog clock reading skill isn't a question being posed by researchers, and information from the plan or other school-based assessment is not available. Analog clock reading still ticks away on our school curriculum, ranging from reading half hours in early primary school to 24-hour time systems being covered in later primary years. Preschoolers continue to be introduced to analog time by ABC TV's Play School, just as they have for over 50 years. There is no doubt that learning to tell analog analog time is hard. Consider the numeral 9, which can stand for 9, 45, 15, 1 quarter, 3 quarters, or even 21. For a comic take on these complexities, watch Dave Allen's classic stand-up routine. Our children are digital natives for a more scientific take. I asked Dr. Michael Goldwater, senior lecturer in the School of Psychology at the University of Sydney, while the hour is somewhat sensible, with an arrow directly pointing at the number, you then need to do some proportional reasoning with, for example, 3 twelfths being equivalent to 15 sixtieths, he says. Digital time seems instinctively easier but still involves unique numerical concepts. Counting, within time, is hierarchically embedded says Dr. Goldwater. Not only do we count from, say, 7 to 12 after waking up, and then back to 1 before 2, we further count within each hour from 1 to 60. In most realms of life, digital clock interfaces now vastly outnumber analog. Our children are digital natives and, within a generation, their teachers will be also, says Sonia Walker, an experienced teacher and director of a multidisciplinary service for supporting children. Yet analog clocks persist, and not only in historical settings. Computers and phones include analog time display options, and even research that looks at children's time telling through touchscreen technology includes both digital and analog clock faces. And then there is fashion. High fashion watches for teenagers are moving back to analog, says Ms. Walker. Clocks reduce students' cognitive load. Many experts see function as the predominant need. Analog time telling still has relevance as analog clocks are still prominent, says Ms. Walker. They have no concern about digital clocks being added to high stress locations, such as exam rooms. Calculating how much time is left is easier for many people using a digital clock says Ms. Walker. Using a digital clock in an exam room is one way of reducing the cognitive load on students. It allows them to feel less stressed and focus on the content of their exam. Draw a clock is a clinical test commonly used in conditions like dementia and stroke. Drawing an analog clock with hands set to a specified time offers great insight into visuospatial ability and reasoning, though at least one neurologist, Professor Simon Lewis of the University of Sydney's Brain and Mind Centre, does not anticipate a time when the clock face test will not be able to be used. There is a real possibility that within decades at least some older people will not have the base level of skill in analog time telling required for this test to be valid. We tell time in a linear way the clock face test's utility suggests that analog time telling is different at a neurological and cognitive level than its digital counterpart. So is it a skill worth retaining for reasons other than tradition and function? Perhaps the circular representation of time on a clock can help encourage an understanding of the cyclical nature of days, but I haven't seen evidence for that exactly, says Dr. Goldwater, who has degrees in linguistics as well as psychology. It is clear from both linguistic analysis and from cross-cultural experimental research that we use space to help us reason about time. But actually, we tend to do this in linear ways, for example, the future is ahead of us, the past is behind us and not the circular way a clock suggests. He concludes, benefits, while I would never completely rule them out, are certainly not obvious. 
does analog alter how we think about time? This leads to a more philosophical question. Does only being able to read time in a digital format fundamentally alter the way we think about time? Professor Alex Holcomb, of the University of Sydney's Centre for Time, thinks not. I tend to think that the shift from analog sweeps, as in a clock's hands, to digital will not undermine our experience of time being driven, despite the lack of visible movement, he says. I suspect it may occur but not because of the digital aspect, but rather because of the precision of digital clocks. Moreover, much more can happen now in a few minutes, thanks to technology, so that may give us a feeling we also have to be fast to keep up. Professor Holcomb introduces mind and time-bending concepts informed by quantum physics, mediated by psychology and philosophy. The experience that time flows seems to be a psychological one, because our best theories in physics say that time does not flow. He says, speaking of ideas discussed in a recent ABC Radio National broadcast titled More or Less Everything You Know About Time Is Wrong. The last great shift in time-telling was from sundials to mechanical timepieces. The benefits were huge, not least the ability to tell time regardless of the light. Yet, the move away from sundials surely contributed to the loss of our sense of the direct connection between the time of day and the position of the sun in the sky. The current move from analog to digital bring benefits of accuracy as well as ease of reading and calculating time. Other than high fashion, tradition and a useful diagnostic test, what might we lose if analog clocks go the way of the sundial? Perhaps nothing, or perhaps we will only know once they are gone. Vivian Pearson is a freelance writer. Print email Facebook Twitter more.